In March 1953, the Korean War was four months away from the peace accord that would bring an end to the hostilities. The war had become mainly an artillery battle centered along the 38th parallel, with opposing sides fighting to take the highest ground in a very rugged terrain. The Chinese would stage one last major assault against the United States Marines, just 45 miles away from the peace talks at Panmunjom. They attacked what were called the Nevada outposts, Vegas, Reno, and Carson, three hills surrounded by higher hills occupied by the Chinese. If one outpost fell, they all would fall. Outpost Vegas received the main blow. For five days and nights, an artillery battle raged that could be heard all the way back to the peace tables. I'm talking about the World War II veterans that served at that time, said there were more shells dropped on that particular battle than any battle they'd ever fought in World War II on the islands. There were over 500 rounds a minute were coming in. The battle was deadly for the American Marines. There were two companies where there was only uh, 40 men left in each company. They were either killed or wounded. They had lost, they had great casualties at that time. These ridges were so steep that a special method was devised for removing the wounded. We had a soldier get shot out there. We had to put him in a, a wire basket up on top of the mountain and this cable that went to the bottom of the hill. One of the kids that was in our group was from Texas. He'd been a orphan child, good kid. He got shot in the shoulder, went down to his hip. We put him in that basket and that's the last we ever seen or heard of. You never knew what happened to them. These steep ridges presented another major obstacle to the troops, restocking their supply of shells for the guns. For the recoilless rifle platoon of the 5th Marines stationed at Vegas, hauling their 20-pound shells up the steep grade was a challenge. They were hard to, uh, hard to walk from the bottom to the top of those uh, mountains. They, they were between a mountain and a real high hill. A lot of foliage had been on them, but most of the foliage had been blasted off of the mountains. Wasn't much left. One Marine commander came up with a unique solution that all Kentuckians would love. He got permission to go down to the Sewell racetrack and purchase a horse. He was a horseman uh, in between his times in service of World War II and Korea. Reckless was a, a beautiful little animal. Uh, she was um, bought by Lieutenant Patterson and was paid $250 for her. She's a, a little racehorse destined to have with a good career, but she ended up as a pack horse for the 5th Marine Regiment. Reckless, short for recoilless, was trained to avoid the hazards of war. After being led by her trainer up the mountain three times, she made 51 more trips by herself. They would load the uh, little mare up with her six or seven canisters and send her up the mountaintop. And she's under heavy fire all the time she was going up. She learned how to duck enemy fire and she knew when to hide back in a little alcove to get out of the ways of shells till she made it. And on the trip back down the mountain, Reckless would carry wounded Marines to safety. She did get hit two times. A friend of mine saw her a shell, or fragments of a shell hit, hit her ears. And, uh, of course, someone in the unit uh, stitched her ears up far. For the soldiers, it was an inspiration that seemed miraculous. We don't know how she made it. The good Lord took care of her, I guess. This brave little mare was loved by the Marines. She just uh, roamed freely with everyone. We never put her up at night. She walked uh, guard duty with me many times. She was like a puppy dog. She just loved people and loved GIs. But of course, she got all kinds of treats of uh, beer and 
sandwiches and things like that. That, that was a good incentive for her. Indeed, her story was so moving, the Marine Corps brought her back to Camp Pendleton in California, where she was commissioned as Sergeant Reckless. The Marines made a big to-do of it, more than they do for most men. They brought in a, a band and they got the troops together. It was a special occasion when it happened. On the 60th anniversary of the end of the Korean War, the Marine Corps unveiled a statue of Reckless, a tribute to the little mare that outfoxed the enemy, bringing ammo up a mountain to the recoilless rifle platoon while under heavy attack. She was a Marine in the most honored tradition, carrying her fellow wounded down a steep mountain while earning two purple hearts of her own. For the United States Marine Corps, there has never been a horse like Reckless.